Well, first let's pray. Yes. Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, to be able to share your word tonight, Lord, not my word. May all my all the things out of my mouth be yours, Lord. Yes. Even the things I hadn't planned to say, Lord, may they all be yours. Yes, Father, we just want to bless you tonight. We want to bless you for all that you do for us, Lord, for the healings we've seen. Yes for the miraculous things we've seen you do in each and every one of our lives, even for the little miracles that we see, yes. that sometimes we don't even realize, yes. just the miracle of waking up in the morning yes. and having another joyous, joy-filled, holy-filled day. Yes. We thank you for that, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How many of you would like more of an anointing? How about more of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. I'm going to give you some scripture. Some of you might want to look it up. Some of you might want to just write it down. Some of you might want to wait for the video to come out, which will be on our website. If you're not looking at our Facebook website, you really should because there's lots of pictures of you out there yeah. <laughs> as well as whoever spoke to try to put a video out there of the entire, the entire uh, message, whatever it was John 14 16 to 17 I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will be with you forever how long is he with us for? Never. Forever. Can we lose him? No. no, absolutely not. And where is he? He's right inside of us, isn't he? We don't have to call him down. We don't ask him have to ask him to come tonight. He's here. We have to allow him to come out. And when we're in praise and worship, and we're singing songs of worship to him, we're allowing him to come out. We're allowing Him to worship with us. The world cannot accept Him because it doesn't see, know Him or see Him. You know Him because He lives with you and will be in you. Colossians 1.27 For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing His glory. Christ is in us. Jesus is in us. We have all of His anointing. So we may want more, but we can't get more. We've already got it all. There's no more to get. There's no more Holy Spirit to get. And we don't just get an itsy-bitsy teeny bit. But you know, we kind of lock him in sometimes. We don't let him out. We're more interested in our own way of doing things and our own way of getting it done. And all the, all the knowledge we've gained over the years between schooling and reading and listening to the CDs and tapes, and we think we know it all. But we don't, only he knows it all. And he's right inside of us, willing to release that through us. You know, there's a couple of songs that I've heard that I've, over the last few years that I really, I really like the words. One of them is by uh, Jason Gray with Every Act of Love. Do you remember that one? It goes something like, I'm not going to sing it. I won't scare you. <laughs> uh, God put a million, million doors in the world for his love to walk through. One of those doors is you. With every act of love, we bring the kingdom come. If the kingdom is right within us, we need to release it. We need to learn how to let it go, how to practice His presence in our everyday lives. One of the things I got a couple of weeks ago, and that's why I started to write this, uh, He told me that Jesus did not come to reside in us for our benefit. I said, well, that's an interesting thing to think about. You know, we think about Him being in us and about all He does for us and about the Holy Spirit teaching us all things. And... But He didn't come for our benefit. 
He died as us on that cross to pay a debt that we could never pay. He comes into every single one of us, but not for our benefit. He's not in me to benefit me. It's not about me. It's about Him being alive in the world. And He's alive in the world because we allow Him out. We allow Him to do whatever it is He has to do. Another song I like, which goes along with this, is by Casting Crowns, If We Are the Body. And it goes something like this, And if we are the body, why aren't His arms reaching? Why aren't His hands healing? Why aren't His words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't His feet going? Why is His love not showing them there's a way? Jesus is the way, because we are His hands, we are His feet, we are His body. Jesus is the way. Amen. Amen. But how often do we hide that? Whether it's where we work, whether it's where we play, whether it's at church, here, or another one, how often do we just sit back and take it all in, but not allow Him out? Jesus is alive in us, and it's up to us to allow Him to use our arms, our hands, our feet, and for our words to be His words, not our words. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Probably all know that one by heart. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have been passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We get according to our faith. We get what we believe. You know, Jesus tells us in Matthew, I think it's in Matthew 29, no, I can't remember exactly, but he tells us that the only work for us to do is to believe on him. Believe on the one the Father sent, which is Jesus. That's the only thing that we're responsible for, is to believe. No matter what it is, for our healing, for our prosperity, Whatever it is you believe, believe it. Walk forth in that belief and watch what he does. Now our old nature has a hold on us. Yet how many of us are still thinking about who we used to be? Yes. Are still thinking about those things that were left undone. Those things that we shouldn't have done. Those things that make us think that we're not worthy to be where we are. But all that is irrelevant. We've got a new birthday. You know, yesterday I celebrated my birthday. (laughs) But I've got another one coming up in May too. May 25th is the day that I was born again. That's my real birthday. Anything that happened before that time is irrelevant in my life. The only time I bring it up at all is if I'm with somebody that's going through some things that I've already been through. And then God allows me, Holy Spirit allows me to share with them what's happened in my life to help them through what they're going through. We are a new creation. Hebrews 10, 17 tells us, Their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. Why do we spend so much time thinking about the stuff we messed up with? He tells us he'll never remember them again. Hmm. We've been born again. We're a new creation. Amen. The old is totally gone. Yes. we got to forget it. <laughs> we got to get out of that old mentality. We've got to latch on to the new person we are and walk in that new person. Amen. Old things are dead. They're passed away. We have a brand new spirit that's born in heaven. And that spirit is holy. That spirit is righteous. We are friends of God. We're right with God. We are his righteousness. All things are from God. And all we did is ask Jesus to save us.
to believe in him. He reconciled us with the Father. No longer is there a penalty for our sin. And that's one that's hard for us to try to understand. We mess up. I don't know about you, but I do. There's a penalty I have to pay because there's consequences on this earth. I can't run a red light with a cop behind me and not expect it to pay a fine. <laughs> there are things that I do wrong that I shouldn't do, perhaps, and there may be consequences here. But not with God. He does not count our sins against us any longer. His grace covers that. Does that mean we have a license to sin? Absolutely not. If we're born again, and we're a brand new person, a new creature, an alien to this world, as Paul calls us, we don't want to do those things. If you know somebody that's born again and wants to do all those things, maybe they should be questioning their salvation. You know, a lot of times we, we do a pretty good job getting people to say the sinner's prayer. But how often do they say it to get us off their back, not really meaning it? See, they've got to believe just like we had to believe. And what happened to us when we believed? We changed. We didn't change because we made ourselves change. We became a new person. We started walking in a, with a different way. We started listening to a different voice. And the fruit of the Spirit was evident in our lives. And it's evident more so each day that we walk. He no longer remembers our sins. Hebrews 10, 1 to 4. You know, we are not recovering from anything. You go to various meetings and you hear people say, well, I'm a recovering this or I'm a recovering that. or We're not recovering from anything. How can we be born again and we have to be recovering from something? We've already got it all. Amen. We need to walk in what we've got. Not keep confessing what we don't have anymore as though it was an issue, a problem with us. We are no longer to have a consciousness of sin. Hebrews 10, 1 and 4 says, For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year, make those approach who approach perfect. There's nothing we can do to make ourselves perfect in this body. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worship is once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year. For it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. I really enjoy Hebrews. Some people think Hebrews just means that the guy has to make the coffee. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we need to remember, too, when we're reading Hebrews, that it was written specifically for some Jews. It wasn't written aimed at the Gentiles. It wasn't written aimed at the saved Christians. It was written for the Jews. So there's a lot of things in Hebrews that point back to the Old Covenant that point back to the law. So we have to remember that when we're reading that and relate it to who we are today. Agree with what God says about you. Confess who you are in Christ. Put off the old and put on the new. The true righteousness that has been given to you, that's the new. We turn toward God, not toward our old way of thinking. You know, it's so easy when we plan out our day, because that's all done based on all our human knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
How often do we not allow the Holy Spirit to help us through those plans? Right. Or not want the Holy Spirit to change our plans while we're going through them during the day? Mm -hmm. Something happens that's going to make us deviate from our plan, miss an appointment, or not be able to speak with this person. And we try and figure out how we're going to make all what we wanted to have do happen. Mm -hmm. Instead of sitting back and saying, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you got planned for me now? You know, what's next? Mm -hmm. And just roll with whatever he has for us to do. We're so used to just controlling it all ourselves. It's easier that way sometimes. But it's not the best for us. We need to turn toward God, not to our old way of thinking. We need to agree with God as to who we are. How often do we put ourselves down to ourselves? I can't do that. Oh, that person prays so beautifully. I can't do that. How does that person get up there and speak to 30, 40, 50 people? I could never do that. With God, we can do all things. The impossible is nothing for God. And he can do that impossible through us. Back when I was in high school, and growing up in junior high and high school, I uh, was not only the next to the shortest kid in class, <laughs> but I also had a very bad speech impediment. I could not speak without stuttering. I had a very bad stuttering problem. The, my scariest class in high school was public speaking because you had to get up and give a speech. I started through that whole speech. It was a horrible experience for me. When I started working in the world, my jobs, I started it during my jobs. I no longer stutter. Amen. You would never know I ever had the problem. Right. We can overcome anything with him. We need to agree with God who we are, and we are in Christ. Our life is in God and God only. Holy Spirit empowers us to reign in this life. The grace of God is released through us. If we just go about our business every day, going to work, coming back home, having some meal, Watch a little TV, read a little, read a little something, the Bible or whatever, and go to bed and repeat that same thing over and over every day. That's not letting God work through us. We've got to beat Jesus for those people that are out there. Do they see Jesus when they see you every day? Do they hear the love of Jesus coming through your voice, your touch, just your smile? Or how about just your silence when they say something that irritates you and you say nothing back? You just love them. I know years ago I always had an answer for everybody. <laughs> and those answers weren't all that nice either. But God has showed me a better way. A better way to be, a better way to a better way to treat others, a better way to speak and a better way not to speak. Sometimes you need to walk out that door and ask the Lord for spiritual duct tape. <laughs> Leave it wrapped on my mouth. <laughs> Only poke a little hole when you want me to say something, Lord. Righteousness. The power of righteousness is greater than the power of sin. Be conscious of the righteous person God has made you to be. We are hidden in Christ. We think, well, Jesus is in me. No, it's us that's hidden in him. We need to walk in it. We don't have to recover from an old life. It's gone. We're born again. Know in your heart that he's forgiven you. And he forgave you at the cross. 
He went to that cross as you and as me. All our sins are forgiven. Today, tomorrow, forever. Our debt's been totally paid. Yes. There's nothing that we could ever do that will take back what Jesus did for us at the cross. So we've got to stop living our life like we still got a debt to pay. We've got to stop trying to please God. We can't please God any more than he's already pleased. He sees us and he sees Jesus. He doesn't see our old person. He doesn't see our mixed up things that we do during the day. He sees Jesus. Amen. And we need to let Jesus out and do the work that he wants to do here on earth. When we slip up, we don't have to get on our knees and plead with God to forgive us. Because he didn't even see the slip up. We saw it. Uh -huh. We're conscious of it. And why are we conscious of it? The enemy's making sure we're conscious of it. Right. And we need to turn our face away from the enemy and turn it back to God and continue to walk the walk that he's got us to walk. Amen. Amen. The kindness of God leaves us to repent. And repentance is us changing looking back to God and not to what we were doing. Changing our thinking towards Him. Turning our thinking to the way He thinks, rejecting the thought we just had. How often, we've all got families. <laughs> They're all in different stages of their life, aren't they? And how often do we want to spend time and energy and money trying to help them fix their problems? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but there wasn't anybody around fixing mine when I was going through them. <laughs> We've got to not let what happens in our families or in our friends' lives take us down the wrong path. We need to stay out of the entanglements of this world. Yeah. The things that try and wrap us up into this world. Mm -hmm. So we're focused in the wrong, on the wrong things. Don't let the laws of this land bend our way of thinking outside of God's kingdom. How many people are totally wrapped up in the election process? What's our responsibility in the election process? Vote. To vote. And I hope all the Christians out here, out in the, in the world, vote. Yes. yes. That's what we need to pray for. That everybody exercises the right to vote. Yes. Can we get entangled in, in, in all the political mess that's going on? And that, is it necessary? No. Yet, some of us do. Some of us get so focused on reading the newspaper and watching TV and the news that we get entangled in all the world's problems. We really don't need to do that. We need to walk forth and do the job that he has for us to do right here on earth. Yes. We need to find out what the father, where the Father is doing something and go in there and help. But not make things up. <laughs> we got to see where he's working and go work. You know, so we need to stay in his way because his way is right and true. Amen. And God's ways are not under an umbrella of political correctness either. <laughs> his, word, his words are true and they line up with the words that we find in our Bible, in his word. Amen. It's up to us to step into our rightful place in God's kingdom. The miraculous should be normal in our life. Yes. We should expect it. When something's wrong in my body, I speak to it. And I pray. And I ask the Lord to heal it. 
And I command things to be fixed in my body. I had a problem uh, Sunday with the, this foot. I don't know whether I got a trolley horse or what, but I couldn't walk very well on this foot. It's fine now. Amen. I spoke to it. And as I walked, I continued to say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And as I walk now, I still say, thank you, Jesus, because he healed it. But we need to expect the miraculous in our life. What we hope for should become a reality in our life. But we need to believe. The key is belief. We need to believe what we're hoping for, and then we can step into it. How often do we just hope for something? And we set it aside and say, well, someday it's going to happen. We need to believe it's going to happen. We need to walk forth. <coughs> we should be like a magnet to the lost world. The lost should be drawn to us. They should want to be around us. Not because we're hitting them over the head with the Bible or putting a track in front of him every time we see him, but because of who he is in us and how comfortable they feel around us, how comfortable they feel talking to us. And when the conversation is supposed to get around to leading them to the Lord, it will get around to leading them to the Lord because they want to know. They want to know more. Not because we're saying, oh, you got to do this, oh, you got to do this. Our walk and growth in Christ should not evolve over time. And yet, many Christians in a lot of the churches that I've been to really believe that your maturity in the Lord is related to how many years you've been going to church. <laughs> As though this maturity is an evolutionary process. Now, they don't believe in the, they believe in creation and not the evolution theory of life, and yet they believe that we kind of, because we go every Sunday, we're being a better and better person, and we're, we're evolving into that maturity. And they don't realize that the day that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the day that you truly believe, Holy Spirit comes and lives in you, and you have absolutely the same amount of power and authority as somebody who's been a believer for 50 years. And you may, you may even have more, because they may not really, truly, be walking in the Spirit. It should happen as we take the revelation we receive and do something with it. As you continually feed yourself from God's Word, you will have ready the words of truth to lead others to a relationship with Jesus. As a representative of Jesus, we need to know his ways, and as we read his word, we'll get to know him. There's a difference. Now, there's nothing wrong with memorizing scripture, okay? But there's a difference between memorizing scripture and having most of what comes out of your mouth be scripture. In other words, it's not about quoting chapter and verse. It's about your speech. Your speech being filled with love. Being filled with what you have read. Without you having to practice it beforehand. Proverbs 23.7 says, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. James Allen wrote a book called uh, As a Man Thinks, So He Becomes. And it's a little tiny book. It was quite popular many years ago, probably 50, 60 years ago. I only say that because my father told me about it. <laughs> and when he told me I was a teenager, and all I could think of was, gee, 
If I'm going to become what I think about it, I guess I'm going to become a girl. <laughs> but that wasn't true. <laughs> but So don't let the devil grab a hold of your words. Watch what comes out of our mouth. The devil wants to have us say things that we don't really want to say. And generally as a rebuttal to something somebody else has said, that's when we need that spiritual gut thing. And never let your own thoughts override what God wants to say. The Holy Spirit's putting something in your mind, but you're deciding, no, it would sound better this way. <laughs> don't let your words come from the devil, but don't override what God wants to speak through you to others. And he will. If you keep yourself quiet, he'll fill your mouth with whatever needs to be said. So may your words always be encouraging and uplifting to others. Speak the truth you've received from reading God's word and not from your own understanding. All of the words out of your mouth should line up with the truth of his word. And just because we, we heard the truth preached, we saw this guy on, on TV, and wow, what a wonderful preacher he was, and all oh, those words were just so great. Oh, I really make sure they're scriptural. Yeah. Test everything by the word of God. If God's word doesn't line up with what you heard, flush it. Amen. <laughs> We can get so confused by getting input from five or six different places and try and combine it all together. We can be listening to some really nice feel-good things, but are they really scripture? Are they really the words you want to take in and hold as truth? So be careful. There are a lot of what I call Christian motivational speakers out there. They do a wonderful job. But it doesn't always dig down into the scripture, into his word. My mother used to tell me when I was growing up, this is one of her, probably, something she said more than anything else. Love is reflected in love. And God is love. And we're a reflection of that love to the world in which we live. So I'm just going to close now and encourage you to go and be that reflection of Jesus to all you come in contact with. May you all be blessed. And if anybody would like any, needs any healing, if you'd like to come forth, I'd be happy to lay hands on you. And there are others here that will be happy to lay hands on you as well. Bless you. In Jesus' name.